Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Ah, <laughs> delicious. Today is Tuesday, February 7th. And if you're on video, my hair turned out cool today, don't you think? It's like, why on some days does the like curling iron work and it gives these kind of neat, almost um, retro kind of waves. Anyway, I didn't want it to, uh, what, bloom in the desert I'm seeing. And also I'll start raking my hands to it and it'll break up the curls. But, oh well. <laughs> At least it was uh, preserved for all posterity. So, how are all you? Uh, I'm, I'm doing well. So, yesterday I had the phone call with Agent Sarah. And it was, it was a delightful phone call. Um, she's doing things by Zoom now, which is nice. It's nice to see people's faces. And introduced her to David. For some reason, they had never met, but he was coming through. And... Yeah, so we were commiserating on the annual beginning of the year fighting with insurance to get them to cover your medications. It's like, how long? How long do we have to do this? I mean, things are better, and I appreciate things that the Biden administration have done. I appreciate what you know Obama put into place with the Affordable Care Act. You know, we're we're getting closer. It's getting better. Insurance companies aren't allowed to be as much of dicks as they are, but it's interesting that like the medication that Sarah has been on for a long time, uh, the medication that David has been on for a long time, which my doctor taught me to refer to as established therapy, <clears throat> the insurance companies try to deny them saying that it's not the recommended formulary. And so then you have to get your doctor to do the pre-authorization for the prescription, which isn't the prescription the authorization? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought that was the whole point of the prescription. But Sarah had to like go through this whole thing where her physician was all, I want to pre-authorize this. I'm trying to pre-authorize this. They won't tell me how. And I mean, how if, if, if our small sample is going through this, how many people are going through this? It's just crazy, crazy. So, um, yeah, good call with Sarah. Oh, right. All right. I won't. She, she loved bandits. I, I, did she say she loved it? That might be anyway. She wants to go out on submission with it. So there we go. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that is the exciting news. Cheers. Thank you all. She wants to go out on submission with it next month exciting so and I had spent yesterday morning fighting with rogue familiar so um, Sarah had a couple of tweaks she wanted me to add a few things she wants me to explain the world more That's, I'm always having to explain my worlds more uh, <laughs> and which to be fair Jennifer East step had recommended in places when she read it for me um, yeah, that's, it's just this um, different level. So look, oh, here's like this one strand of hair that did not get curled. It's like totally straight. You know how sometimes you can see the hairstyle where they like do some curl and some totally straight? I would be so good at that. <laughs> but I digress, as usual. Um, yeah, so she wants me to explicate on the world building which means I have to figure out a few things. And because I was um, fighting with the book, I told her that I could actually set it aside for the time being, put Rogue Familiar on the corner, let it think about what it's done. Um, I might start from the beginning. I feel like I don't have the thread on it. And maybe it's because I've been stopping and starting on it so much. My work has been um, patchy on it. So, what I'm going to do is spend the next few days, I said this week, but I don't 
think it'll take the whole week um, to make her tweaks, add to it. Um, and then finish writing out the synopsis because I need to add more about what actually happens. I mean, she's so funny because she said, um, she's like, okay, so totally spoiler me. What's the deal with X? And I'm like, oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> she just started laughing. She's like, Jeffy. It's like, I'm sorry. I, I know that nobody understands how I cannot know these things, but I don't know these things. It's like, I don't even know how to explain it I, because I want to use a word like it's unknowable, which I don't know. That's not terribly helpful. Um, it's, it's as if because I write linearly, as I'm writing the story, I am discovering the story. And Yeah, so it's like I don't know the answers to things because I haven't fucking written it yet. So, so now I have to play this game that we play in traditional publishing. And I know it's not just me because I've talked to other authors about this, where we do this hand waving with the synopsis because, and this is advice for all of you out there, if you have already written your book and you're pitching it, then this is easy. In your synopsis, you have to tell them how it ends. And you have to be specific and tell them how it ends. And I realize that this goes against um, instinct. You, you don't want to spoil the ending, right? You want it to be a surprise. You don't want them to know. Uh, the thing is... They, they have to know. They have to know that there's an ending. They have to know what kind of ending it is. And, you know, maybe this seems like a thing that is, I don't want to say counterintuitive, but, but it's a funny thing because people don't want to do it. I didn't want to do it when I started out. And when I give writers advice, they don't want to do it. And I don't know why. I think it's just so ingrained in us not to tell the ending of something. But, uh, yeah, agents, editors, they want to know what the ending is. They want to know that you know what the ending is. Because it's really a thing that um, a lot of writers don't know how to land the plane. Someone was asking me not long ago why agents ask for partials um, why not just ask for the whole read whole manuscript and read just a piece of it and it was an interesting question because you can see the point um, some of it might be holdover from print days uh, which i'm not sure it occurred to me to say at the time but you know you didn't want to mail the entire manuscript but some of it's also to see if you can follow instructions. A lot of the things that agents and editors ask for are that seem kind of like weirdly detailed are to see if you can follow weirdly detailed instructions. Um, and not only can, but will. Because a lot of people are like, fuck that, I don't want to do that. And it's like, well, this is a test actually to see if you're able to do something that... Um, might be annoying later like so okay so one thing sarah said to me is like i have this deal in there where they're negotiating for one third and they talk about one sixth and she's like jeffy why are you making me do math <laughs> don't make me do math why can't it be like a quarter and a half he was like well i don't know <laughs> i liked it that way i will accommodate her because that's, that's part of the relationship, and that's part of what she brings to the table. Uh, you know, and sometimes you have weird things where you go back and forth with, you know, the copy editors on commas and that kind of thing. And it's like, a lot of this is, how are you to work with? And 
and what I call the crazy test, which people laugh, but there's a fair number of crazies out there trying to get books published and they want to know that you are not a crazy person. So I was giving advice um, to someone the other day. Oh, my uh, super smart aerospace engineer, new friend. Hi, Kat. I don't know if you're listening to this regularly. I think you listen to the one podcast, but if you are, hi. Uh, and we were talking about the query letter and how much of your profession you should put in there. And I told her, because we were having dinner, so it was an extended conversation, and I said, by the way, do include in your query letter at the end, that's like your final paragraph, I said, say that you are an aerospace engineer and that you are in charge of this team of people putting a freaking coronagraph telescope into space to search for exoplanets. And she said, really? You know, because she said, I did have some of that in there. And somebody else had X'd it out and said that they don't need to know all this. Okay, so the thing they don't need to know is like how many kids you have and what their names are. Um, they don't need to know about your pets. Um, you can mention where you live because it says something about you. But your profession is part of the crazy test. So... If she tells people that she is an aerospace engineer, that means she's smart, she's disciplined, that you know, with her PhD and XYZ, um, that she's able to see projects through, um, that she's in charge of a team of people doing this meticulously exacting task means that she's really good at working with people, right? Because you don't get that kind of thing done unless you're good at working with people and working with the team. So that's why you include that kind of information. So, sorry, that was all a bit of a tangent, but um, part of the brand here at First Cup of Coffee. So, um, so yeah, you know, writing out that synopsis, there's, you know, kind of like this whole debate about you know, should it be in the voice of the book? How do you write one? You know, nobody cares that much about how brilliant the synopsis is. You kind of want to be careful up to get away from the and then and then and then, mostly because what you want to focus on is character and motivation, um, including things like the theme and the, the feel of the story, maybe the pace of the story. Um, so you want to get away from it being a dull recitation of facts. Um, at the same time, you don't want to recapitulate the entire narrative. What you want to do is give the high points and let the person reading it know that, A, that there's an entire book there, um, what the arc is. Does it go from A to Z, essentially? Which is my problem, because my stories... I usually do like A to K. So this is where the hand waving comes in, is that I will write the synopsis and I will say, oh yeah, um, L is going to happen and then everything's going to go to hell at M through P and they're going to try to pull it out in QRS, but then at T, it's a complete disaster and U through X is them struggling to keep it from being an utter disaster and then at y this happens and finally at z they emerge victorious um, and in love etc and the what do we want to call it I'm, I'm not thinking of the phrase i want it's not the elephant in the room it's not the missing stare. It's like the thing that we all know and all know that everybody else knows, but that we don't discuss openly. So whatever that would be, is that the editor, the publisher, the agent, they all know that the story is going to change. They fully expect that the story will change. So even someone like the fabulous Dorinda Jones, who is my polar opposite 
creative process wise because she'll have like a 50 to 80 page outline of her book um, very detailed with like snippets of dialogue and scenes and stuff um, she <laughs> even she diverges from it so as she writes things change and the people who work with creative people like us know that's going to change so given that why do they make us write the freaking synopsis for the reasons i said before because they want to know that you have a feel for the structure and how it's going to turn out and so even if it turns out differently from that <laughs> they want to know that you know how to get there they want to know that you know how to land the plane and so it's kind of a funny thing because you would think that as I am working on my, what did we decide it was? 64? Yep, 64th published title, um, Rogue Familiar. And I'm only counting the republished ones once. So, you know, because it's that title. Someone just pulled into our driveway, which um, since we're out in the country and nobody ever comes to see us is unusual, at least they don't come to see us without warning, but it's like the Amazon delivery, this whole Amazon flex where they have regular people with their own cars deliver stuff is disconcerting. <laughs> it's like, why are these people coming to my house? Um, but as I recall, this is something that I am looking forward to receiving. I can't think offhand of what it is, but I know it's something I want. I'm sure I'll be delighted when I get it. Anyway, they also don't know not to look in the window. So like this person just came up on the portal and I studiously ignored them. And I could tell from the corner of my eye that they were standing there looking at me, waiting for me to acknowledge them. No, go away. You are a delivery bot. <laughs> Is that awful? But no, I don't want to interact with you as, as a person. I want to do my podcast and not have you standing on my portal staring at me grumpy if i had my cane i would shake it off to shake the wand the permission wand you do not have permission to talk to me on my portal <laughs> all right anyway so i was saying something about the synopsis why do we do it um yeah, so I think I know enough about the world building now that I can like line this out. But the other thing that I will do is I get um, my friends like uh, Dorinda and Jennifer to help me think up <laughs> plausible plot points. And I kind of know where it's going to go. Um, longtime listeners will know that I often use the analogy of a road trip that I like know I'm going to, which somebody else explained to me that this was my process, which was nice to have someone else explain it to me. That it's like, I know I'm going to drive from Seattle to New Orleans. Um, I know quite a bit about the area around Seattle. I know I'm going to have to cross the Mount, Rocky Mountains at some point, have to cross the Mississippi River at some point. Uh, and I, you know, know that there's space in between, <laughs> but that, it's hard for me to um, know exactly how that's going to play out. But I also don't have to. I just have to be able to get the high points. So that's what I will be working on for the next couple of days. And um, cross your fingers because I would just, <laughs> I, I feel like I've been saying this for years and I've done well. I mean, I, I am grateful for the success that I've had, but you know, like before my first trad book deal, before any of my book deals, when people would ask me like what I wanted for birthday or Christmas, I would say I wanted a lucrative multi-book contract. <laughs> and it's like, I still want that. Um, but I want a big chunk of money. Um, and I was watching the clip with, um, have you seen the one with Jennifer Aniston talking to Drew Barrymore about manifesting things? And Jennifer says that you do it by, um, by thanking, thanking the universe as if you have already received the thing. Um, and which I found interesting because I've worked a lot with like envisioning and manifesting, you know, like what it would be like. But um, 
putting the gratitude forward, I thought was an interesting approach. So I'm going to work on that. Um, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it could happen. It might not, but, uh, yeah, it would be helpful. So, um, on that note, I am going to get to work and I'm feeling good about it. Um, I'm relieved to be given an excuse not to work on freaking rogue, rogue familiar. I'm glad I pushed the release date out as far as I did. So now it might be more like March 25th. Um, but yeah. All right. I hope you all have a wonderful Tuesday. Um, it's beautifully snowy here. I'll post a picture of the snow and I will talk to you all on Thursday. You all take care. Bye-bye.